for all you ground uppers out there, this podcast is for you. This is the Fan of Fan podcast, and I'm Topless. And for all you ground uppers out there, this podcast is for you. Episodes are flying in, and tonight we are joined by the former Stavely, Hansworth, and current goalkeeper of Stocksbridge. It's Ben. How are you, mate? Yeah, really well, thank you. Um, how are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you, mate. Thank you for coming on. It's great to have you. Yeah, no problem. Pleasure. Good stuff. So, Ben Townsend, how did you get into football, then, mate? How did it all start for you? Um, I'm a... My dad, really. Uh, yeah. I'm sure you sure you hear it a lot, and it's it's the same old. But he's just been a massive figure uh, for for me going into football, going to watch Sheffield United from as young as I can remember. Um, having a season ticket up in the uh, in the visit Malta stand, I think it was then. Yeah. Um, just watching and and playing constantly, like nonstop, and yeah, just just played all the time. Yeah. Um, obviously, we went to watch my dad as, as a kid as well. He used to be a goalkeeper, but not to uh, a non-league standard. But he tells me he's better than me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, how long ago was that then for Sheffield United game? When 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 was this? Uh, probably started going from when I was about five. Obviously, playing football before that like, in yeah. the garden and whatever. But going to watch Sheffield United from when I was five, six, and. Um, just had a season ticket there ever since, really, until I started playing. Um, well, until I moved abroad to play, and then um, obviously going into non league, it's not allowed me to have a season ticket. So, probably five to about 14, 15, um, going to watch them. And yeah, really enjoyable at times. Loads of ups and downs being a Jeff United fan, but uh, yeah, it was uh, from, from when I was about five. Yeah, yeah fantastic. So, so, so what sort of things have you seen over the years with Sheffield United then? You mentioned ups and downs. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the best memory for me, I, I've mentioned it the other day on my Twitter actually because it popped up. It was uh, uh, a memory on... I think it's so many years ago on that day. It was the, um, Steve Cabber scored the first and then Michael Brown scored a volley in the second, uh, for the second and just remembering like everyone going mad and uh, a nice Steel City derby and yeah that's a one of the better memories um, and then the Pesky Salido goal against Forest in the playoffs oh, and he's gone absolutely nuts that was just the two legs are just insane um, but then one what always sticks with me what's uh, not so great is um, I think it was 3-1 uh, at the Millennium Stadium I was there Um Michael Brown had a penalty saved uh, against Wolves in the playoffs. Um, yeah. And I've come outside after we'd, we'd just been beaten. Sky Sports were there in the game. And we said, oh, how are you feeling? I've got this red and white wig on, crying my eyes out. I don't want to speak. I don't want to speak. But, yeah, that's uh, not a great memory, uh, that one. But more more good memories than, than, uh, than bad, especially in the recent years. Of course. Like I touched on there. Arguably the best goal ever scored in a Steel City derby, do you think? Michael Brown? It's got to be. The Michael Tom one wasn't bad. The free kick at Hillsborough. That, um, was, a good one that well. was a good one. But just the way he flew in the air and to beat Kevin Pressman on that day it was, um, it was just unbeatable, wasn't it? He, he was unbeatable. Um, but yeah, just to beat him and he was brilliant, yeah. Really, really good yeah. goal for me. That, and again, me coming from uh, Mansfield, really a lot of uh, heavily Nottingham Forest populated area, and you know I've spoken with them about that game, and I can I know uh, my uncle was there, and he said he in in the in the away and Forest season ticket holder, he says he were crying. Yeah, well, <laughs> you weren't, <laughs> and and you know what, it nearly happened again last season. I uh, I actually managed yeah. to get a ticket for the away end for the second leg, even though there was not much hope and. Yeah, we've ended up turning it around. Extra time, penalties, losing on penalties. That was it was heartbreaking to be honest. But we just just see and sense that pesky Salido feeling that once we'd scored and and whatnot, and then we end up getting to extra time. You were just that feeling, that buzz, and yeah, the 
like I say, the pesky Salido when he when he runs off in an aeroplane and, and, and whatnot, shirt off, it's just it sticks with me. It really does. Like it's yeah, so memorable. Like I wouldn't have liked to be in a forest fan on that day. Yeah. Well, they have avenged it, unfortunately yeah. for you, but uh Sheffield United again, they're one of those teams cannot do it via the playoffs. No, no. Um it's a bit of a it's a bit of a sticky one and a, a bad omen over us the playoffs and don't fancy going in them this year. The obviously the most one of the most recent with a Steve Simmonson penalty against Huddersfield and yeah. uh, obviously then the Forest one. It's just not for me. I, I don't like going <laughs> to be honest. Um, but it's, it's just one of them things. Yeah, it seems to be. Hopefully, a it's a change for Stocksbridge this year in the playoffs, and we <laughs> we can get through them. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but I mean, I say there, teams in red and white don't seem to do well at Wembley. No, <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> no, and the same with my club, Mansfield. They they never seem to do it by the playoffs either. It's got to be top three or bust, I think. Unfortunately, yeah, they very what rarely get there, do they? <laughs> <laughs> no, not really, no. <laughs> um. But what are your thoughts on Sheffield United this season? Um, very strong. After looking, uh, after watching that today, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, <laughs> no, I I do think we're very strong. We're a, a very strong championship out, outfit. Saying that, I think the championship's the, the weakest it's been for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we'll, I think we'll get over the line. There's a big gap now. Um, yep. I just worry about the transfer embargo, can that be resolved? Uh, I worry about when we get there, if we get there, into the Prem. Yeah. We're going to have to, we're going to have to bring a lot of players in, in my opinion. Uh, the, the lads who are in the team at the moment, a lot are going to be out of contract and uh, we've, we've got an ageing side. Um, so we do need, we do need some firepower and we need, uh, we need some signings as well, to be honest. I don't want to do a forest and start spending and yeah and bringing 20, 22, 23 players in. That's just not not for me. It doesn't sit well that. Yeah. What 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 has caused the transfer embargo? What what's gone wrong? To uh, to be honest, I'm not quite sure. I, like I say, I only uh, read into it like everybody else, and I think it's just unpaid bills. Um, so there's we're currently going through a. Um, a takeover, and they're trying to decide who who's going to pay the, that bill and this bill, and it's from a, a previous transfer, which um, I'm not quite sure who it is. Don't know how much it is. Mm-hmm. I just know we're we're in a bit of bother. Yeah. <coughs> well, hopefully it gets resolved because, like you say, you've got to spend money in the Premier League to stay there. Yeah, I think we. I don't think we've got long to resolve it, and then if we don't, if it's not resolved, I think it's a two transfer window ban. So that'd be uh, worrying times for Sheffield. Very worrying, right very worrying but, uh, but certainly, you know, Hecky and Stuart McCall are certainly doing a great job so far. Yeah, uh, a little bit sceptical when uh, when when he came in, um, yeah. but his brilliant. His record speaks for himself, and I think he's taken over a team and gone. Back to obviously, um, Slavi changed the Chris Wild away, and Hecky understood the Wild away and knew what players he had to deal with, and he was used to that. So, why change it, sort of thing? But you know, sometimes change is good, but not then. And Hecky's changed back to, to the Wild away and, and really kicked on with the team. It's been, uh, been really good from him. Hats off to them both. It's yeah, really, really good. Really good. Let's let's go back to your playing career then. So, what was it that made you want to be a keeper? First things first. <laughs> um, I don't know. To be honest, a bit nuts. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it. I uh, I've got the description of yeah the the crazy one. The, my nickname was a as a kid coming through um, Sunday League and and stuff like that. I used to have Psycho on the back of my shirt. Um, <laughs> that was just. Threw myself in front of everything and no fear back then. There's a little bit more fear now. Uh, but yeah, now I just played. I just was all right at it, I think. I was just all right at it. I, I was one of them. Like A lot of keepers are similar. They they think they're good outfield players, but 
they always end up back in net. Now, <laughs> I've played football on a Saturday in, in goal and on a Sunday, um, I like to play outfield. Um, so I do a bit of both, um, which you know helps with the footwork as well. But my dad were a goalkeeper and he just, he just ended up in, in the net. That was it, just fell in love. Yeah, following in his footsteps. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Hopefully, he uh, can take it a little bit further than he did. He had a had a couple of injuries, which mm. has held him back. So, yeah, it happens to the best of us, unfortunately. Yeah, injuries. that's it. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of players. It's just a bad luck thing, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, I've had one bad one myself. I've had uh, yeah. an ACL, um, so I was out yeah. for a for a a, a year, uh, but yeah. obviously. Thankfully, thankfully, um, recovered, recovered well, and and uh, and pushed on. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, I know. Uh, my friend, who I ground up with, his missus used to play. She did her ACL, and uh, took her about nine months. She came back and within weeks. Did her other ACL, and yeah. unfortunately never recovered. Yeah, I think never that was played. it. Being a keeper, though, I think obviously yeah. if you're an outfield player, you're into more tackles and. Yeah. More running and, and stuff like that, so I could put like set my way back in a, a little bit more gently, and you know it was it's just one of them. Like it's, it, there's obviously a little bit more of a risk for an outfield player to to go and do your other one because you've worked yeah. so hard on the the one you've done. But you know, thankfully, uh, touch wood that that'll be it for me. Fingers crossed, mate. Definitely. So. um Stavely mine as well for them. Is that, that the first team you played for? How did that um, It was. Uh, no, no, I went from. Um, so I went, I played out, uh, played football in Portugal. Um, okay. Well, in La Manga for a year. I did a scholarship out in uh, in Spain for a year. Okay. I went over to Portugal for a year, to Lisbon, then came back and went to Ilkeston. Okay. Um, and then. Was at Ilkeston for a year. I was uh, in the same crop of players as um, Ash Hunter, who's now at Morecambe, um, and, and Shea Adams and Callum Chettle. Um, so I had a, had a good year there, and then went to Staveley. Uh, from there, I didn't didn't make any appearances, unfortunately, for for the first team, bar a couple of friendlies. But um, I just felt like it was time to to move on and go and try and get first team football and. Um, I played for Stavely under 15 through uh, Neil Cluxton and then to got back in when Neil was was uh, in charge of the first team and played a few and then Jasper Jasper took over and um played played a lot more under Jas. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, just what a club, like brilliant facilities, just always yeah. been a been a top club and ran well by Terry and yeah, I can't speak highly enough of him, uh, to be honest, but yeah, Jas Jas really gave me the chance, and um, it was just unfortunate the way it ended. Uh, me playing under Jas, I ended up going out to America to coach for four months, and, and that was that. Obviously, I had to start thinking about another keeper, and and and, and we we went from there. Right. Okay. So quite a lot there: La Manga, Portugal, Ilkeston, Staveley. <laughs> yeah, uh, a couple of clubs um, um, going through the teens and, and whatever, and then yeah. obviously really settled down over the last five years. Yeah. So, so what, what was it like in La Manga? I know if you remember years ago, Jurgen Klopp took Liverpool to train there for a period of time. That's how I've heard of it. So what was that like? Yeah, we were staying on the uh, the golf complex just around the corner uh, yeah. in, in one of the villas and um, roomed with four or five different lads and, um yeah, the, the facilities were just insane. And obviously why we was out there, a lot of national teams came over. So the ones I remember, like Scotland was out there training for the uh, the Euros, I think it was. Yeah. Um and and it was the under twenty ones England team who came out there. Uh, so there's quite a yeah. quite a crop of players who who, who came out and, and trained on the same facility side by side and and yeah, it was it was a brilliant, brilliant experience for me. Fantastic. Sounds great. And uh, 
And then what about Lisbon then? Was it like playing and living there? It looks a lovely city from the photos. Yeah, so it was the same. Uh, it was the same company. It's called BSI. It was um, uh, a company owned and run by Duncan Ferguson and uh, Ian Wright. Um, so they was our mentors, uh, and we just moved. It was just a transition from Spain. We we upped and we moved to Lisbon to try and get uh, a, a different experience. And it was that the facilities was 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 good, not quite. The villas we was living in, it was more uh, an Olympic complex, what we was. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, we just travelled around and, and played the likes of Porto, Benfica and Lisbon and, and played them in friendlies. And yeah, again, another another good year, another good um, another good experience for uh, for me at 17. Did, did you play on the at the grounds? No, on the training complex, unfortunately. Oh. Uh, but we did. We did manage to go to some of the games. So we managed to get tickets to. Uh, we went to Benfica, Barcelona in the Champions League, which again, oh. like, just you don't. You, it's things you dream of. Like you don't. Yeah. You don't think you're ever going to do that. And, and obviously, I've been lucky enough to to experience that. And yeah, really, really happy with that. Yeah. But what what year was this then? Benfica, Barcelona. Um, I was out there 11 years ago, um, so I'd have been 16, 17, um, so yeah, 16, uh, sorry, 11 years ago, yeah, so 20, 2011, 2012, yeah. yeah, 2012, I think it would be, so it would have been, you know, near, near, near the peak of Barcelona. That peak in Barcelona, it was, so I was quite disappointed with Messi, but I think he scored two on the night. He didn't do anything, yeah. did touch the ball, and then bosh, bosh, goal. Um, yeah. Two goals, and it was like, oh, wow. <laughs> Unbelievable, just a 10-minute spell. Like, it, was, it was brilliant. Uh, still never seen him play, but I bet it must be mesmerising. Yeah, it was... Um, it was just, like I say, a real experience to, to watch yeah. him and um, an experience in play at, at the peak time. Uh, obviously, with Xavi and Iniesta and yeah. uh, even Valdez. And it was just, yeah, peak Barcelona, it really was. Wow. And any other uh, notable games you went to see while you were out there? Um, we went to a Lisbon game. I can't remember what it was. It was just a league game. Uh, went yeah. to watch Lisbon. Um yeah, no, no real, real notable games to speak of, of, of the likes of the Barcelona uh, and the games to be honest. Okay. And then, as you say, back to, I don't know what league they would have been in at the time, because I know they've uh, stopped and started again, Ilkeston have, haven't they? Yeah, it was yeah. Uh, the Kevin, the Kevin Wilton era. They was in the. Um, uh, was it? it was when they'd not been relegated, um, so there's quite high up and. Um, what would it have been? I don't remember what it was called. Is the one of the Evo sticks? Evo stick. The Evo stick. Evo yeah. bond, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was the Evo stick, and um, yeah, it was just before the the madness all happened with whatever happened with the chairman, and um, then the relegation downfall and re-registering, and yeah, it was uh, before the madness. So I was there. At, a decent ish time. Um and like I say, just had a had a year there um uh, doing the under twenty ones programme and um then travelling and travelling with the first team but never really uh, making the bench or making any appearances. It was just a case of let's blast balls at you before the game and at half time to be honest. But again a good experience and cracking players there as as well. So yeah, a good experience. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, they're on the way back up. I don't know if they're about the same place where they were when you played or in step three at the moment. Yes, it's... I looked at the team the other day. It's just absolutely... It's a joke, isn't it? Like, they've just signed Leroy Lee, early Tomlin. And yeah. Just like, what is happening? It's like cheat mode on football manager. Like, it's ridiculous. But fair play, you know, they've worked hard. They've kept the facility well and now got the after turf down. And, uh, Plans in place just look phenomenal. So I'm really happy they're getting back to where where they should be. I hope it, I hope they can stabilise themselves. Uh, they've just had a change of chairman. He's gone to Scunthorpe, I believe. 
Yeah. So hopefully he can hopefully they stabilise himself and and really uh, really stick to it with the fans and good set of fans. Yeah, very good fan base. Lovely ground as well, I have to say. Yeah. Um and then as you say, then to Staveley. Yeah, to Staveley. Um I was I was only young and, and playing in the uh, was it the NCL still then? It was yeah. just yeah, still the NCL and making some appearances still for a keeper to to be playing at I think at eighteen in the NCL it was a big ask and a bit of pressure and felt like I dealt with it well. I don't know what Jess Oliver would say. You know, but, um, <laughs> yeah, it, I felt like I did all right. Um, you know, I was. It was just one of the things we. The only reason that we left, it was we said there was Chris Butt who came in and I went to America, but he played while I yeah, went on one of the trial days down in uh, uh, down wherever we went and he came in, did well, kept his spot, I had no arguments with that and good experience to play, good experience to still travel with them and be around. And, um, yeah, it was um, a good club to be at, a good club to start at. Mm-hmm. Whereabouts in America did you go to coach? Um, I went to uh, Rhode Island. Um, okay. So I was like Rhode Island, Providence based. Um, and then we went down to up, up down, no no idea about geography to be honest, but we went to uh, uh, Philadelphia, New York, um, yeah. Connecticut. Uh, so I did a, did a fair bit of traveling and uh, along the way and got asked to stay out there for a bit longer to to coach one of the teams for an extra uh, two, three months, I think it was, but I turned it down. I went to get back, uh, back home and mm. try and kick on and, and play football. Um, I just didn't want to miss out on the pre-season period and miss a chance at, at any club. Fair point. It's just, you know, a couple of years ago, I actually applied to coach there myself and got offered a contract. Unfortunately, the year was 2020. Oh, what a, what a bad year. <laughs> Challenger Sports. I know who you went with. Yeah, I went with Challenger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Challenger Sports. That's where I went with. Yeah. Gutted. Who knows? Maybe I'll get a chance one day. But uh... Maybe again. I wanted to go again. But I've had uh, got a little one now. I miss it yeah. now. So it's uh, that's off the cards, to be honest. <laughs> we'll see what happens, definitely. But, uh... So then you get back to Staveley. As you say. Yeah, get yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Get back to Staveley, and um, just things didn't didn't quite go to plan. Um, I ended up going. Um, I think I went to Hina uh, from Staveley. Okay. Uh, I went to Hina for half a season. Um, it, it well played well. I, I thought I did well, and then uh, they brought somebody else in who they'd had before, who was a bit more experienced, and it was just the old. I don't know if I could say much on here, but it was <laughs> it wasn't a decision made by everybody. Um, and that was clear from the assistant manager that it wasn't everybody's decision and not everybody agreed with it. Um it was just the manager and bringing a, an old friend back in, that's how it tempts. Um the keeper he did bring in it. Top lad, brilliant lad. Like I still speak to him now. Like Joey Mack, Joey McCormack. I'm not sure if you know him. Um, and it was just a an unfortunate situation that Joey Mack became available when he did. And for me, sorry, an unfortunate situation for me. That he was available when you know he was, and, and and he got brought back in, and that was me. That was me done. Joey McCormack, I do know that name. Sherwood is, is most he, recently. He's where, sorry? He's, well, they played at Sherwood at the start of the season and uh, a little bit of last season. Has he uh, played for Sherwood with... Town before? He has, yes, yeah. I'm sure he has. Well, did they sign him from him or did he go from Sh- from Ina to Sherwood? Because I, I know, I remember, yeah, I used to, I'm from Sherwood, really, and I used to follow him. Yeah. We used, to be, uh, we used to have a drum and a flag and we used to sing a little bit. Yeah, and He was yeah. quite a popular figure for us. Yeah, um, like I say, absolutely cracking lad. Like, not a yeah, bad yeah. word to say about him. Like, brilliant keeper, brilliant, yeah, uh, brilliant lad, and just it was just unfortunate what happened. And 
<laughs> for, for me, I was felt like I was really playing well and, and, and kicking yeah. on. I probably, well, I just had one bad game and yeah. that was it. Dummy was out of the pram at that. <laughs> oh, I mean, the good club are here now. I saw them on Saturday, uh, win at Kimberley. Really oh, yeah. lovely fan base. Yeah, yeah, love the fans. Absolutely brilliant. Like I say, not a, again, not a bad word to say about the club. I've not got a bad word to say about any club I've been at, to be honest. They've all been yeah. absolutely brilliant and um, fans are brilliant up there. We, we travelled well. Um, but yeah, it was it was just one of them things. It was just a football decision and when when Jerry and Matt got back in, it was just time for me to to up and, up and move on and moved on to Renner from there. Um, they'd been after me for a while and shown me the love and it was one of them I felt wanted and I ended up having two two and a half good years at, at Rainworth. Rainworth wine as well, fair. Wow, so a bit of a journeyman around Nottinghamshire, Derbyshire. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Um, like I say, it was just trying to find football. I'm, I'm not one of those to, to sit around and <clears throat> money's never been my motivation uh, yeah. in football. It's just... Um, I was young. I want to play. I'm, I'm the same yeah. now. Like, I just, I love football. I love to play it. Hate watching it. I say I hate watching it. I hate watching it when I know I should be playing it. Yeah. You know what I mean, I, I, I'm all for the team. I love the team, but yeah. I want to play. So it, it was just one of them. I've, I've always gone to try and play football. Yeah. And what what year is this then at Renneth and what league were they in? Because I know... Oh, they was in the NCL. Uh, yeah. So I was... It was the Julian Watts uh, and A.D. Smith okay. era. Um, another former Shybrook man? Another former Shybrook man, yeah. Um, absolute fantastic folks. Yeah. Um, again, lovely club, well run. Um, yeah, just... They was after me for a while and I decided to go. I actually made my... Funny story, actually. It's just a just a little bit of a light bulb there. It was um, I had to play three games so I could make I could play, start in the, one of the cup matches. But obviously, mm -hmm. they still had a goalkeeper at the time when they first brought me back in. They said, "Look, it's going to take a little bit of time for us to uh, to get you in." Obviously, it's not fair to just drop him straight away. But we do want you, and you will get your chance. So my debut was away. And I came on for the last 15 minutes at right back. <laughs> okay. So I made my debut at right back. Uh, I can't remember where it was now, but yeah, I made my debut at right back in the, in a, in the bar with an absolute screamer. But yeah, that was, uh, I was unfortunate, but yeah, I enjoyed that. Um, and then I didn't end up getting the three games in after all because he forgot to put me on in the second game. Oh, oh. he should be chatted up. <laughs> uh, so, I, you know, but from there, I uh, I end up uh, stepping in after two or three games and uh, and, and really stamped my, stamped, uh, stamped my place um, and, and made it mine. Oh, fantastic. So, two and a half years at Renneth. Yeah, I went through... Uh, went through uh, the like I say the Jew uh, Julian and and AD era to the Craig Denton era at, at Rainworth. Uh, okay. Ended up ended up captain, becoming captain um, just before Julian left. Um, I was captain for for the season that his last season, uh, and then captain when when Craig came in, um, and then I got injured. That's when I got injured from the. Uh, I got injured against Garforth, I think it was. Um, it was just a ball over the top. I've gone out, cleared it, but um, who was it? I think it was... Oh, what was his name? can't remember his name. I ended up playing with him. I ended up being with him at work a little bit after when he went back. It was one of the strikers anyway. Uh, he just added me and it would no ma no malice in it. It was just one of them. He's just landed on me yeah. and... Just felt it straight away. I just, I just knew. Tried standing up, and my, uh, my leg just collapsed. Like, I just knew it were, it wasn't good. Can you, can you describe the feeling at all? <laughs> it just felt, it was a bit floppy. 
just no strength in it. You just like I say, I treatment came on and, and like I've said previously, like I just love playing football. I just want to play and play through many of injuries when I probably should have gone actually mm-hmm. don't play. I, I need a, a little bit of time here. Um so I stood up, tried walking back to my net and as I as I turned around I just like I'm down on the floor and that was it, carried off. Mm. Wow. Well, I love Over that. Leave it um, recovering for nine months, yeah, I think it's just the standard nine months and and didn't, it was towards the end of the season you know, when I was recovered um, and obviously Craig had gone to work top at that time. I'd had an op and had a bit of time out and then I got a call from Craig and he uh, asked me to go and be the goalkeeper coach at, at work top for the, uh, the promotion year. Um, so obviously the record's been beat now, but was there for the the record breaking year. Made one appearance in 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 the uh, against Hemsworth, uh, so that was my first game back. Um, made one appearance, won one nil, clean sheet. Uh, towards the end of the season, oh, let me just plug you in with batteries. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I made uh, made the one appearance and um, yeah, just a goalkeeper coach. And it really it kept my kept my head in the game and kept me around and, and, and really helped me out to be honest. Uh, so I've got a lot lot to thank um, Craig and, and Rob uh, and Wayne Wayne for and getting me involved and really enjoyed that season. And it was a good promotion party and yeah, it was it was really good. Fantastic. So then, uh, so then, where after that, then, then promotion party? Again, it was. I got got offered to stay and, and fight it out with Dave Ray in the in the. Oh, where was the promotion party? Sorry, did you say? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that, promotion yeah. party. No, it was just a this clubhouse and then out in work top. Uh, yeah. And then can't remember when we went. We didn't go abroad anywhere. We just yeah, just enjoyed it locally and. With all the fans, and like I say, I'm sure we'll touch on, on on fans and best fans a little bit later on. But yeah, it was sensational. We we just wanted to enjoy it with them, and we actually won it away in Albion. And yeah, it was a, a good celebration with the with the fans, and it's it's nothing more than they deserve. Good stuff. So, uh, where from workshop then? This is when I really started to settle down now. Um, so, like I say, again, just wanted to play football and, and, and whatever. And David just got promoted with worked up. So, I just, you've just got to pick your battles. Uh, and I felt like it was a battle not worth taking. And I didn't want to sit around. I've been sat around for 10 months. Uh, and then I got a call from Ross Eagle um, at Handsworth. And then that was the start of the started the Hansworth journey uh, for me. Um, so, yeah, it was it. Went to Hansworth and, and really, um, really kicked on with, with my football. And I was about, I think I was 23, 24 when I first sat. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, just like I said, I made 98 appearances in the end before, before moving on. And uh, you wore the captain's armband as well during that time. Is that right? Yeah, um, wore it for a, for a good season, um, and then things happen, and uh, Ricky came in. Ricky Ricky took it for a, a little a little while. I was vice captain, and I was captain again, and and then Sam came in, and like I say, people not all the time like keepers as captains, and you just got to respect that, and they prefer somebody in the middle of the park for whatever reason, and. Didn't change me as a as a person or a goalkeeper. Obviously, disappointed. Yes, uh, yeah. I felt like I'd, I'd done a good job at it, and I'd always rally the lads up. And I was the organizer on the pitch, organizer off the pitch. But it doesn't make a difference in in actual fact, does it? It's 
tossing a coin and then you've got to have 11 captains on the pitch. Yeah, definitely. Well, what, what do you think of Hansworth as a club? What's what's the ambition? Because, you know, when I come up against Hansworth with the my junior team that I coach, why is what here? Yeah. It's an absolute nightmare. <laughs> but Hansworth's a nightmare. Yeah, oh. Hansworth always thrashes. Any team I've been at, <laughs> Hansworth, oh, good. So, I mean, don't can try not to keep it, keep it low, lads. Keep it low, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the ambition of Hansworth. Um, at the start of this year, uh, obviously from chats we had with uh, the management side and the, the, the lads we did bring in, like the, the likes of Sam Finlow, uh, yeah. me staying, keeping Mitch done, and the, um, the 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 task was to get promoted uh, and finish in the top two. Um, unfortunately, Sam got injured quite early on. Yeah, uh, and then we was just hit and miss. We just wasn't consistent enough. And, um. Yeah, the the ambitions there. It was just the the performance from the lads, and it 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 was just so hit and miss. And I think we missed too many opportunities. We we conceded too many soft goals, and there was a lot of mistakes. Uh, we had quite a young team. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, it's just not gone to plan. Hmm. Because I mean, I don't know if it, how true it is, but there were murmurs a long time ago that uh, Hansworth wanted to be as high as the National League. I, I'd not heard that myself, but but yeah. why not? The sky's the limit, you know. If, if you're going to get promoted, is why why look away from that? Um, yeah, go as high as you possibly can, and the club <laughs> deserves to be higher than it than it is. Um, with Wardy and Holmesy uh, as the chairman, said. Uh, Absolute brilliant top blokes, like just they'll do anything for you. It was a tough, really tough decision to leave, to be honest. Um, and not one what um <clears throat> not one I took lightly. Um it was one what took a week, week and a half uh to decide on, even though hands were for where they were and stocks were where they are. Um it was it was one of them. It, it did take me a while, but now I've made the right decision for me. I had to be selfish, and that's one thing I've not been in in football for the years I've been in it. I've never been selfish. I've always tried looking after others, and it was just time at twenty seven to to be selfish and do it for myself. And that decision was Stocksbridge, I believe. It was. It was indeed, and, and that's where we are today. Um, yeah. Absolutely loving every single minute. Uh, yeah. I've got, like I say, I've got quite a few mates up there already. Um, one of the lads I'm best man for, to be honest, this year, Rob okay. Goodwin. Um, <laughs> so, obviously, that's how Stocksbridge came about, really. Um, obviously, the gaffer and, and whatnot. I've played against him a few times when he was at Penningstone. Um it was it, yeah. So we know of each other. Uh, I think Ross and and, and Jordan and, and took a pool of of putting a word in, and not a word in to say Ben wants to come. It was a word right. We've lost our keeper. Let's let's try Ben, and they tried, and and, and that was it. I was uh, and like I say, that's where I am now because I think they've put a put my name forward. Good stuff. And how long how long have you been at Stocksbridge for? Since November. Um, but okay. saying that, since November, uh, the, yeah, I think it was the end of November, um, I've only played six games because of the weather. Um, so six games, um, for me unbeaten uh, in, in those six, three clean cheeks out of the six. Um, so yeah, a, 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 a good start, but Saying that three clean sheets, but the defence has, has been absolutely fantastic. To be honest, um, they've, they've kept me a little bit quiet, uh, which fine, no problem. I'm clean sheets, man. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, a lot of a lot of people, myself included, were saying at the start of the season that they predicted Stocksbridge would struggle, and here you are today in third place. <laughs> yeah. It's sensational, really, to say, uh, I don't want to touch it too much, but budgets and, and whatnot, what you're flying around in, in the league. 
Ours is one of the lowest, and we've just got hungry lads who are good mates, and team spirit gets you more points than it'll lose you in seasons, and and Definitely. that's why they are where they are. And obviously, it, being at Hansworth and us getting a lot of the Stocksbridge players um, at the start of the season, Stocksbridge didn't look like they was they was necessarily going to have. Um, a big squad, which we've, we've not got a big squad to be fair, but Richo's re recruited really well and the lads who are in the squad now, they, they're fantastic. They really, really, really are. Um, but yeah, I think you and me both, uh, I used to have a, a bit of banter with Ross, you know, we'll be patting each other, we'll be going up, we'll be coming down. and Yeah, now I'm with them. <laughs> Final word on Stocksbridge. C can they do it? Can they reach step three this season? Can they yeah, do it? Goosebumps speaking about that then, actually. Um, I, mean, I think we know who's winning the league. Uh, yeah, they're, again, well, like I, I touched on it, it's uh, a football manager cheat code. Let's buy a sugar daddy, I think, isn't it? Um, <laughs> but no, works out deserve it. Like, like I say, the yeah. fans are fantastic. But can we do it? Uh, yes. Yes, we can. Um why not? Why shouldn't we do it? We're in a great position. We've got a never say die attitude. Long may it continue. 15 games left, plus two in the playoffs. If we, if we get there, there's a we're creating a bit of a, a a bigger gap between between us and, and outside the playoffs. Um why not? I think we can beat anyone on the day. So yeah, I'm gonna go with yeah, we can. We can. Well, a few teams around you. I know Stockton Town are one of them doing okay. Uh, who else occupy the playoffs at the moment? Uh, I think it's Heaven. Heaven Town. One of them. Heaven. Uh, I think Shil Shilden, Shilden, Shilden is it? Uh, Shilden, yeah. I think no, no, Shilden no, sorry. Uh, no, uh, Pontefractor, just yeah. outside. I think. I, I, uh, I meant Dun Dunstan, not Shilden. Dun yeah, uh, yeah, Dunstan. Uh, yeah. I know they're up north. Yeah, there's uh, there's a few in and around. I think Brighouse run a bit of a good run as well, yeah. um, and and Chef FC they was on a bit of a yeah. good run. I'm not sure how them how they're looking now. To be honest, I've always been one of them. I I look at the fixtures we've got. Don't look around us. Don't look up. Don't look down. Just focus on us. Um, and as long as we're winning, <clears throat> what other teams do is 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 none of my business. And, my business is making sure I keep a clean sheet and, and we get the three points. Absolutely. Yeah. So, over the years, playing or watching Sheffield United, this counts for that, who would you say the best fans you've witnessed? Or played in the... Played in front of. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with... It's got to be worked up. <laughs> <laughs> They're brilliant. They are. They really are. Uh, I think yeah. they're a bit like Marmite, aren't they? To be fair, yeah. I don't like Marmite, but yeah, they are like Marmite. You either love them or you hate them, but in, in this case, I, I love them all. Like they, They're brilliant. They're welcoming. They're loud. Yeah, um, yeah I just, just love my time there. It, everything was for the fans and it really got, got us over the line that season, whether I was playing or, or not. Like, you Felt it on the sideline. It was just, it was brilliant. I mean, my uh, co-host Ben has done quite a few vlogs on this channel uh, recently, and yeah, you can see the fans are absolutely brilliant. It balmy, honestly. Base. That's the, the only way I can describe them is balmy. They, they're not yeah. as they, they're so passionate. It's like they, it's like they're following Rangers away or or, or whatever. They, they are they. They live, breathe, and and die. Works up town football club, and, and they, yeah, they're top class to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm good. I need a revisit on that ground. I'm looking forward to it for the fan base, definitely. Yeah, it's gonna be a good one. So, yeah. So, who are the worst then? If you, if you've got a worse fan base, for whatever <laughs> reason, um, be biased if you want to. I don't mind. The worst in regards to the stick I've got. Let's go with. Uh, yep. Not with the, the quietness. Um, the worst. It's got to be Pontefract. Pontefract? Pontefract. 
Honestly, I, re- I played up there twice. So I played yeah. up there last season in the FA Cup. Yeah. We got absolutely dick. Um, they battered us. Um, <laughs> and I got battered myself. I saved a penalty and uh, it, it just weren't a nice day. It just... Yeah. I'm one of the... I, I, th- I do thrive off um, getting stick. It yep. keeps me motivated. It keeps me keeps me going. And you see Aaron Ramsdale and how he goes off, and you just watch him, and it's like, yeah, I thrive off getting stick. But they were nasty. <laughs> they weren't nice at all, Pontefract. And then obviously played against them this season. They reminded me of the uh, the victory in the FA Cup. But luckily, we uh, we got with a three two win. So that were a nice celebration and a fist pump in in front of them afterwards. They were getting called all sorts things I've never heard of. Yeah. Wow, an ang- angry fan base. And you look where they've come from as well. I mean, over the years, me watching Shabrook Town, they've always been the make stay in step six and they're doing pretty well in step four, I have to say, this day. And yeah, day. really well. That, that's uh, it, it, It's one of them. The 90 minutes, they're, they're angry fans. But after yeah. the game, it was, yeah, fair enough. Like They, yeah. they just try and put you off. And as a keeper, I think you notice it more. Um, the... One of the things he was saying, I was just like, all right, yeah, sound like have a little chuckle, have a, a little bit of a nut and back. And um, yeah, after the game, like I say, they, they were brilliant, like fair enough to them. And it was all took in, in good deed. I took it, they took a little bit. And if I gave a little bit, I got a bit more. It was, it was, it was one of them. So it kept me motivated to make sure that we got the three points this year. So, what about grounds then? Where's where's the best ground you've you've played at? You think? Um, Question. Uh, played on the Pro Act uh, Chesterfield ground uh, in uh-huh. the cup final. Um, non-league ground. I'd say Ilkeston. Yeah. Il- yeah, Ilkeston and. Uh, the change room, the facility, the setup. It was pitch at the time when I was there. They had a, an old bloke called Derek, who who did the pitch, and he spent more time on the pitch than he did at home or anywhere else. Like every time yeah. we walked through the gates, he was there. He was he was just there. He lived there. Yeah, the pitch was sensational. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to say Ilkeston for non league grounds. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, good choice. I, I loved it when I when I visited the ground. I think it's fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Um, but what about the worst? If there is a easy worst? one, played in the NCL for a very long time. You want to fancy having a guess? I think Colliver went with Glass House, and I don't know if that's one you say or no. Close, close. Um, Maltby for me. <laughs> <laughs> As a goalkeeper, yeah, as a goalkeeper kicking up the hill, it's just. I think Paddy Kenny lasted ten minutes when he went there, didn't he? Uh, he just didn't fancy <laughs> kicking up the hill, I reckon. Um, well, yeah, it's got to be Maltby for me. Yeah. The the changing rooms aren't welcoming. Um, mm. The showers are cold. Yeah, I think we we played we played that at the start of the season for Hansworth, and he was. No, you can't have a shower. We've not flushed the showers, so there's some type of Legionella or something in the water, so you can't have a shower. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, they, they've sorted of that, but they're still cold, and, it, yeah, it's not a nice place to go. Fair enough. Not for everybody. Um, what about one ground that you'd love to play at, anywhere in the world that you'd love to... Anywhere. Goalie? Yes. Surely, um, for any... Any boy, girl in England loving football, you've got to want to play at Wembley. Wembley. You've got to want to play at Wembley. And that's ev- surely it's everybody's dream. Yeah, yeah, there's the likes of the Bernabeu. And obviously, you'd love to play at the Bernabeu. You'd yeah. love it. New Camp, you'd love it. But Wembley for me, it's got to be like it's just an absolute dream. Yeah, can't argue with that. Any particular game? Playoff final, FA Cup final, League Cup. <laughs> uh, hopefully next year we have a good run in the FA bars and uh, and we get through the FA bars. I think I'll go with that one. Non-league day, yeah, that'll be special, won't it? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it would be. <laughs> so let's uh, wrap it up with the last question, the one that we ask everybody. Is that if you could sum up football in three words, what would it be? It could be three separate words or a three-word phrase. It's one phrase what sticks with me. Um, and it was something uh, a guy called Richard Lawrence used to say when I was at Barnsley as a kid. Um, and it's heart, passion, desire. You've got to have all three to to make it as a or to to do anything in football. Yeah. And he all, before we went out, he used to say heart, passion, desire. Without it, you'll never be a player. And every time I see him or every time I speak to him now, he'll just say heart, passion, desire. And whether it's I describe football like that, it's just one phrase within football that that I always remember, and it's just those three words and. It's it's meant a lot over the years, those three words, and it's it's stuck with me since from 14 years old. Um, and like I say, I still see him now. I think he's up at Belper now. He was at books at um, Boston with with Craig Elliott for for a good period of time as a keeper coach. Uh, he was my keeper coach, and yeah, I've stayed in touch with him. And yeah, like I say he, he says it every time we speak. Um, but yeah, that's our passion desire. Heart, passion, desire. I think um, out of every episode we've ever done, I think passion is probably the most popular word that we, when we ask that question, passion always seems to come yeah. up. It, yeah. Know, it's how it should. Yeah. Um, it does, it, well, it, it doesn't surprise me, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, good word to use to describe, to describe the, the game. Definitely. But, uh, but thanks a million for coming on, mate. It's been uh, great to have you. No and, problem, um, enjoyed it. Yeah, me and a few friends will have to come down and see you at Stocksbridge sometime this season. Yeah, no, it'd be, uh, be good to see you. It'd be nice to uh, to have you down, maybe. To, uh, well, it's cold in June as well as January, so... Uh, <laughs> I think it's, not as, it's not as cold as Garforth. All oh, right, yeah, that is a, that is a fresh one. Hate. <laughs> Love the club, hate the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's not the coldest. I went to Flint in Wales last Saturday. That was, oh my good night. Three layers was not enough uh, <laughs> on the coastline. But uh, yeah, but no, ideally a Tuesday night for me. So I'd, I've uh, I'd trained my team that night and it's just down the road. Yeah. From, from Goodwin to Stocksbridge. And I have to bring uh, reinforcements and vlog it for YouTube, I think, as well. So yeah, no, it'd be, uh, it'd be good to see you. Uh, welcome any time as well. So it'd be, uh, it'd be nice to have a catch up if, uh, if you make one. Yep, definitely. And uh, in the meantime, this has been the Fan of Fan podcast, and we will see you next time.